mile and a half. How did you uh, how did you get how did you become familiar with uh, the Murdoch family and the Mazel property? How did you start working there? I was walking and Alex would uh, stop and talk with me, and he asked me one day about cleaning the kennels for him, and and probably a couple months. Six months later, then he uh, asked me to come do it on the weekends. And that started about four years ago. About four years ago. And uh, walk us through the process. What did you uh, What did you do? How many times a day did you do it? Twice a day. Once in the morning. Once in the evening. All right. What time in the morning, generally? It, it average around seven. Did you wake up early. Oh yeah. So seven a.m. and then uh, what time in the evenings generally? Usually around, I try to get there around 3, 30, 4 o'clock. How long does the process typically take you? About 45 minutes. And walk us through what that process is. What do you do out there? In the morning times, I would take, go feed all the dogs, give them time to eat. I'd feed the chickens. That way the dogs would have time to eat. Then I'd wash the pens out. Then I would usually... Roll the hose up and then go to the house. And then come back in the afternoon and repeat the process. Now you mentioned uh, washing the pens out. Now the dogs, did they have dog beds yes. in their kennels? Yeah, Buster. Buster. Excuse me. Grady and Bubba had two dog pen, uh, beds. And if you're washing it out, meaning you're, are you spraying it with water? Spray it with water. Did you, what did you do with the, uh, the dog beds? I would stick them up on top of the dog box. And then uh, did you leave them up there or did you put them back? Normally during the typically, once I wash the pens out, I would lay them back down, especially if it was cold in the wintertime, I would lay them back down on the ground. But during the summertime, you would wait to that afternoon to lay them back down on the ground. The, uh, in the four years you worked there, did you get to know the, the property fairly well? Yes. <clears throat> did you get to know um, the folks that lived there pretty well? Yes. Did you get to know Maggie Murdoch at all? Yes, sir. All right, well, tell us what your experiences with her were. Normally, uh, she was just so laid back. Oh. She would talk to you like a normal person. Uh, we'd sit there and talk about the dogs. Uh, she'd talk about sometimes where she would be at the beach. But she normally would tell me, you know, I'm going to the beach. I'm taking Bubba and Grady with me or whatnot, or I'm going to leave them. You know, or if it was real hot, she would want me to put them over there in the ice house, turn the air conditioning on where they have the ice. Um, the cooler is that. Did Maggie like to spend time with the dogs? Uh, all the time. And you mentioned the ice house. Was that the uh, processing house kind of on the back of the hangar? Probably. That was the... And, and why, was it air conditioned? Is that why you said she put them in there? Yeah, during the summertime, it got real hot. And that house, does it have air conditioning, that, that shed? Yes, sir. All right. Did you get to know uh, Paul at all? Yes. All right. What was your What was your experiences with him? Uh, he was a little, little wild and crazy, but he would work. That boy would work. He liked being at the farm. He liked he liked getting out and doing things, hunting, and but he would work on the tractor or whatever, and Daddy needed him to do. And did you get to know Alex? I did. Is he here today? Yes, sir. Where is he? He's sitting right over there. Do you uh, explain what he's wearing? Wearing a suit, a pair of glasses, blue looking shirt. And what were your experiences with Alex? Mm, he was always very particular. He would want the dog buckets washed out. Uh, it looked like they started getting any kind of green or brown looking stuff in the water. He wanted to make sure, which I usually wash them out every two weeks anyway, uh, with bleach. But uh, I always dump them every day. 
Was uh, Alex easy to get a hold of? No. All right, explain that. What do you mean by that? Uh, he would either be in court or doing something with business. Uh, it would sometimes be a little bit difficult to get a hold of him. Who did you see most often when you were out there? Miss Maggie or either Paul. And how did uh, how did Maggie and Paul typically come to and from the, the big house to the kennel area? Paul would use be in his truck. Uh, very truck? We've heard a lot about trucks. Which truck was that? His white F-150. Unless his daddy had him doing something, then he would have to drive the F-250. But most of the time, he'd be in his white F-150. What color was the F-250? It was also white. So two white trucks were what he typically used? Yes, sir. And uh, how about Maggie? Um, she normally drove her Range Rover until he, she got the black Mercedes. And then, and then what would she drive after that? Most of the time she would drive the black Mercedes. And would she load her dogs, the house, first of all, let's go back. Which dogs were down there? Do you remember all the dogs? Uh, Bubba, Grady, Maggie. Then they started letting, I uh, can't remember his name right off. Dahlia was there, Armadillo, and I call her Taffy Toes. I don't know what they called her, but that's what I always called her. And I think the other dog, was that a dog owned by one of Paul's friends, Rogan? Is that the one you're referring to? Yes. What type of dog was it? A lab, chocolate lab. And uh, which dogs were the, uh, the family dogs, the family pets? Grady, Bubba, and Maggie. And what kind of dogs were they? Labs. And colors? Bubba was yellow, Grady was black, and Maggie was yellow. And would they uh, typically, where would they typically stay, those dogs, those animals? It all depends on, most of the time, because Bubba was very rambunctious, so they would got where they would lock him up in the kennels at night, and most of the time they would lock all the labs up in the kennels to keep them from roaming off. Uh, but Miss Maggie would take them out during, when she was home, usually a lot of times after I done left, she would take them up to the house, let them roam around the house, the yard for a couple hours, and then she would bring them back down to the pens. And if Maggie would Maggie load them into her car if she was taking them elsewhere to the beach or wherever else she was staying? Wherever she was staying at, she would load them in the vehicle. Most times, she would load them right in her vehicle. What's been marked? States exhibits. Uh, uh, Jim, any objections? Here? I'm going to hand you what's been marked as states exhibits 505, 506, 502, 503, 504, and 516. Dale, if you wouldn't mind, please take a moment to review all these and let me know if you uh, recognize what they show. They showed a kennel. Okay, and then the, uh, I believe there's one diagram there, if you recognize what that shows. It shows diagram drawing of the kennel. Okay. Very good. Your Honor, we'd move to place all those exhibits into evidence, I believe, without objection. No objection, Your Honor. They're admitted without objection. Right. What's been marked as State's Exhibit 505? Do we have the uh, helmet, please? Okay.
Dale, while we get this loaded up, tell us, tell me a little bit. I know, uh, did you have a particular way of of hosing down and you know with the dealing with the hose? Tell us a little bit about what that was about. Oh, the particular way of me putting the hose away, or right. Oh, um, normally after I got through washing, I would stretch the hose straight out. Into which direction? Back towards the shed room right there, the dog feed room. All right, and and, uh, and we now have the Elmo up. We're looking at Exhibit 505, and the feed room, I believe, is what you're referring to. Is that the structure on the far right? Yes. Okay. All right, and then uh, where is, in this picture, where is the hose you're talking about located? It's back towards the left-hand side, back towards the forest end. Is that that yellow That's that yellow green up? looking hose. All right, go ahead and explain to us what you would typically do after uh, after rinsing off and putting the hose away. I would stretch the hose out back towards the feed room. I would cut the valve off at the top, which is right up above as the hose come in. Then I would walk back down and cut the valve on at the end of the hose. That way it would release the pressure, and then I would roll it up uh, slowly until I had it uniform. Were you pretty particular about how you wound that hose? Yes. And why would you do it that way? And did you do it that way every time? Every time. And why would you do it so particularly? Because if you notice how the hose right now is kinked up, it would start making the hose when if you didn't do it right. Eventually, it would, would it keep kinking? It would start making it where it didn't want to, and it would cause the hose to start having little splits on it. <clears throat> the the picture that you're really seeing there, that hose, is that the way you would wind, uh, rewind it up? No. How do you know? Uh, my very particular how I roll that hose up, and it's kinked up. If you notice, there's pressure on that hose. Uh, somebody used that hose after I did uh, because it is twisted, and the nozzle is too far up. The nozzle, I would always have it made sure it was laid down flat. That nozzle is too far up. Dale, I'm going to show you what's been marked as States Exhibit 516. And uh, again, please briefly explain what, what it is we're looking at there. The drawing of the kennel. Okay. I'm going to hand you a pen, and, and with the court's permission, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and fill in the well first of all let's let's want let's back up did you work the uh were you aware of the events surrounding june 7th 2021 where maggie and paul were murdered um i received a phone call from cd that the sled wanted to see me because miss maggie and paul had been murdered and i thought he was joking but he told me no i told him give me five minutes i'll be up there because i was going to carry my trash off at the time and I got up there and uh, the dogs was raising cane and I asked them could I go ahead and feed the dogs so they would quiet down and they told me to give them a few minutes and then they gave me permission to feed them and as soon as I fed them they just quiet down they didn't bark no more okay. um, so you were familiar about that incident event? yes sir and you went out there what day uh, that morning <clears throat> Was that the, the 8th of the morning of Tuesday? Uh, when the murders happened, yes. Did you work every day leading up to that day? Yes. And did you do that normal routine, which you already described? Yes. All right. And did you, in fact, do that normal routine on the Monday of the before the murders? Or, yes. Okay. Walk us through that day. What, you, what did you do in the morning? I got there... <sighs> Um, probably around 7, 27, 8 o'clock. It all depends on when I got up. But most time I got up early, I would be this before 6, 30, 7 o'clock. I would go through there, feed the dogs, feed, then go feed the chicken. That give the dog time to eat their food, and then I'd wash the pens out. And uh, was anything unusual or out of place when you were down there on, in the morning? No. And did you repeat the process again in the afternoon, in the evening time? 
idea. Uh, what time did you, on Monday, June 7th, what time did you go back to the Pens? I got there before 4 o'clock. Um, I remember leaving at 4.30. All right. And was, uh, was anyone there at the time you went to the dog kennels that day? No. Did you uh, notice anything out of place when you went there at the dog kennels in the evening time? No. And what did you do uh, after arriving? Well, once I arrived that afternoon, I got out. Uh, I fed Grady, Bubba, and Maggie. Because uh, we fed them twice a day. The hunting dogs only got once a day. Uh, took and uh, fed them. I picked the dog beds up. I dumped all the water out because I, I washed all their buckets, gave them fresh water, washed the pens out, uh, stretched the hose out, cut the water at the valve off at the top, went down there, cut the water on, uh, the valve on down at the end of the hose so the water would not uh, come out, rolled the hose up, and it pulled 30 out of left. And uh, you rolled it, did you roll the hose up the way you've always done it that day? Every time. Do you remember how the dogs were laid out in the kennels that day when you left? When I left, yes, sir. And uh, with the court's permission, I'm going to ask the witness to please, if you would, write on that piece of paper, the exhibit, state's exhibit 516, beginning with uh, first of all, on the far right, what's that door signify in the in the uh, storage diamond? room? Storage room, feed room. Okay. Beginning with kennel one, next to the feed room. What dog was in there when you left that day at four o'clock or before five o'clock? Grady. Yeah. All right. If you would please write Grady in there. Okay, and then moving on to kennel two. What dog was in kennel two? Bubba. And for our reference, Grady was the black lab? Grady is the black lab. Okay, and Bubba is a what? Yellow lab. Okay, and who was next to Bubba in pen three? Maggie, because she was getting bigger than Bubba. And Maggie is a what color? Yellow, a yellow lab. All right, were there any dogs next to Maggie? No, no, no. Okay. And that would be kennel four was open? That'd be, yeah, that one should be an open. The next one down should have been um, Rodin's dog. Okay, can you write that in there? Just write Chocolate Lab? Mm. Or Rogan's dog, whatever you want to write. That would be I'm kennel trying, five? I'm trying to remember Rogan's la uh, dog's name. Should have been there. I don't remember what Lebrugas dog's name was at okay. the time. Was there any dog located in kennel six? If you want to work, however you want to do it, sir, it's if you want to just fill out the rest of the dogs, the working dogs, that's fine. Well, Dahlia was at the very end, kennel 10. I know that. All right. Um, then let's see. Armadillo should have been the next one coming back from Ken. Let's see, empty on nine. Right, it should have been on. Yep. Armadillo should have been right past the hose right there. And then it then it would be Taffy Toes. It would have to be Taffy Toes right there because they always kept Rodin's dog and Maggie there was a kennel in between them. 
so that should have been tapped to right now. I'm going to put this on the screen, just verify that that was what you filled out. All right, Mr. Uh, Dale, I see uh, starting with number one, Grady, then Bubba, Maggie, then five is Rogan, six is Tappy Toes, seven is Armadillo, and ten is Dahlia. Is that, is that correct? That's correct. And that's the way it was when you left the property at a, around 5 o'clock that Monday, June 7th. Yes. And on, for, for our reference, on this diagram, that green circle, that represents what? The hose. Garden hose. All right, I'm going to show you a few more pictures. If you would, just describe what we're seeing. Are you familiar with that angle? Yes. All right, where are we looking at from at this angle? Where are we looking at things? You're looking straight down the, the kennel where you got the hose and the, the walkway going down in front of the kennels. And on this picture, where would the feed room be located? At the very end on the right hand of this picture. Okay. When you, uh, in, four, in the four years you were washing out the... Uh, the kennels, did, did water collect or pool in certain areas? It did. All right. Can you identify in this picture those areas? Right under the hose, and right there, which was, should have been Armadillo's pen, that should have been right there, and then right below it should have been collected. And maybe one more little spot right down there towards the end of the holes right there, but that'd be about it. For the record, right I'd like to say for the record, this is stage 504. Moving on to stage 502, a very similar angle. Dale, do you see those uh, pools of uh, collected water that you mentioned just on the last e exhibit? Yes. Okay. And also states 506. And again, do you see the same angle just, just pulled a little farther back? Yes. Who's the dog there uh, on the last uh, pen that we can see in the dog shed, in the dog uh, house? Dahlia. All right. Did water ever pool over by the feed room? No, because usually when the, that's the I would go in the afternoons, the sun would come down and beat. Um, it would dry it up a lot quick. Oh, especially in the summertime, it would really dry it real quick. In the wintertime, the sun would actually still hit the concrete around 3 to 4 o'clock. It would be usually around 6 or so before it, the, the sun wouldn't be hitting on the concrete. Did water pool in the front of where Bubba would have been located or Grady? No. Showing you State's Exhibit 503. Dale, are you able to see the water located near the feed room and in front of the, the two kennels, one and two? Yes. Is that how water would normally pool when you washed the kennels for four years? Normally, no. Oh, there's too much water right there. You can tell where the concrete's already done started drying, but there's too much water right there around the second and third pen. Looking at this picture, what dog do we see in kennel one and what dog do we see there in kennel two? You see Bubba in kennel one and Maggie in kennel two. And again, Grady is what kind of dog? Grady is a lab. What color is he? Black. Black. <clears throat> is that the, and, and when we say the spots where you would put them or they were located, were, were, they, were there assigned kennels necessarily to the dogs? Not really, but most of the time Miss Maggie wanted uh, Grady to be in that kennel right next to the feed room. And then we'd use it for Bubba or Maggie in the following. So that was just out of uh, habit, mostly Maggie's habit? Yes, sir. All right. 
did anyone else in the family put the dogs in a specific location or did they put it wherever they could find a spot? Uh, they would put it wherever they could find a spot. But Maggie was particular about where she put them up? Most of the time, yes. Dale, I'm going to ask you about um, firearms in general. Are you familiar generally with firearms? Yes. Did Paul have any firearms that he favored over more often than others, just in your experience with him? Yes. All right. Are you familiar with a uh, an assault rifle style rifle? Yes. All right. Tell us about the one that, that you observed Paul having with him most often. If, when he went hog hunting, he would have a AR style 300 blackout. And uh, what color was it? Black. Did it have a scope on it? Yes. All right. Did Paul also favor a, a camo shotgun? Yes. Doing turkey season. The family owned, as far as you knew, the family owned a lot of firearms. Is that correct? Yes. Did you, in your experience, and did you spend a lot of time primarily down here at this dog pen area? Yes. Twice a day, every day? Yes. Did you have occasion, did they occasionally leave guns at this area? Yes. All right, where would you have found them? And, and, and when I say occasionally, what does that mean to you? That would be, especially when it was during hunting season, they would uh, leave either on the golf cart or side by side. Sometimes they would leave them in the, um, the truck. But most of the time it would be on the golf cart or side by side. And how often was that if you're there every day? Uh, sometimes it could be once. Sometimes it could be three or four times. In a, in a, in a month? or so In a month. month. It just all depends on how hurried it got. But that's during hunting season, right? That's during the hunting season. And uh, did Alex carry a firearm? I've never seen him carry a firearm, but I know he carried uh, a pistol in his vehicle. Did you have a chance to listen to uh, a kennel video in meeting with law enforcement? I did. And did you identify the voices on that kennel video? I did. Whose voices did you hear? Paul, Maggie's, and Alex. In all the time that you spent out there in the four years, every day, twice a day, did you ever see a gun left in the feed room? No. And you went in the feed room every day, twice a day for four years? Yes. Thank you, court's indulgence. And when you refer to Alex carrying a pistol in his car, is that because you, how'd you know that? Uh, one time I had to drive his vehicle over to the law firm, and then uh, every once in a while you, you would uh, happen to roll up the window or something up, it go to rain or something up, they happen to not be home. You mentioned the vehicles. Were the vehicles unlocked, all the vehicles on the farm? All the vehicles on the farm, keys in them. Keys in them, so... Someone could just open the door and drive them? Oh, yeah. If they weren't in the switch, they would be in the center console. And in this picture here that's still on, uh, do you see the dog beds located in, the, in those pictures? Uh, yes, they're on top of the dog kennel. They haven't been put down? Haven't been put down. Thank you. By the defense. Board. Good afternoon, Dale. Good afternoon. I'm Jim Griffin. We've met a few times, haven't we? Yes, sir. Um, I want to uh, start by uh, asking you just how long did you work at Moselle with, for Alec Murdoch? About four years. And twice a day, every day? No, it started off on just the weekends, and then I went full time with him right as right before Ronnie quit. Okay, and that's Ronnie Freeman. 
uh, whatever his last name is. I know Ronnie. That's all I can tell you. Yes, sir. And a uh, couple things. You, you've said you, you've never seen guns left in the feed room, but you certainly seen guns left down in the work shed and yes, and in the uh, what you call side by side, and that's a off road vehicle that two people can sit beside each other. Yes. And then I guess they had golf cart yes. down there, and you seen them left guns there. Yes. And um, you have seen guns left in their vehicles. And, yes. And unlocked, right? Unlocked. And and hog hunting. There's really no season for hog hunting, is there? No. And a couple of those dogs in that kennel were used for hog hunting. Uh, we had got uh, Paul had got rid of. Uh, the blue tick, uh, and, but he kept um, armadillo, but, but he never really hunted him anymore after um, that last time he got hurt. Right. Now, let's just be when you're hog hunting with dogs, I don't think you can use a gun, can you? Oh, yeah, you can use a gun. Oh, you think? Okay. The uh, Unless you're mad enough to go in there and catch him by the foot and bring him out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, somewhere along the way, I, I, I heard you had to use a knife as opposed to a gun, but I don't. The uh, let me let me ask you the. Uh, I'm going to pull up this video, Exhibit 297. It's the kennel video. And hang on, let me get around here. Dale, it should be on the screen there. And if uh, I'm going to tell you when to stop, Doug, but if you go ahead and play it. Now, well, stop right there. Is, is that Rogan's dog? Yes. Dog named Cash, you think? Yep, that was it. Cash. And Cash was... I'm saying, but what you've got labeled on Exhibit 516, Cash would be in kennel number five. Is that right? Should have been. Around. Okay, that's, a, that's a few uh, kennels up from the hose, is that right? Yes. Okay. All right, All right. we're going to run this, continue, and I'm, I get ready to stop when I tell you, Doug. All right, stop. Oh, go back, go back, go back. A few seconds. Well, right there. You, what do you see up there in the top left on that picture, Dale? Hose. That's the hose? Yep. Now, that hose is on the ground, isn't it? Yes. It's not rolled up, is it? Nope. Okay. And there's water around there, isn't there? Yes. Okay. So someone, before this video was taken, had taken the hose down that you meticulously uh, wrapped it up. Is that right? Yes. Okay. You can take that down. Now, you said Mr. Ellett was particular about how the hose should be wrapped. Is that right? Well, not particularly him. He, he liked it to be wrapped up, but he wasn't very particular how long as it was wrapped up out of his way. <laughs> okay. But, but I was very particular how I wrapped it. You were very particular. Yes. Okay. How about Paul? Was he meticulous how he wrapped? It? No. Okay. All right. The uh, now you mentioned that um, water would not normally accumulate up. By Grady and 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 Bubba. Bubba's, uh, because that's where the sun would co come in the evening. You right? wash the um, because uh, if you didn't be very particular, right? It, um, they didn't seal up underneath that door, so the inside the jams started to rot. So I tried to make sure 
if, because if it was any kind of puddling or whatever, you'd, you'd have to make sure it was gone. Right. So you would try not to make sure there was no puddling there. So puddling didn't usually happen around the dog bean room. Uh, it would use a couple posts back. You would have under the hose, usually around about where Armadillo's pen was, and there was a few other little spots around the post that normally would puddle. Now, and, and you were meticulous about not letting water build up around the feed room door because of the rot. Yep. And in fact, there was sealant in the the feed room where you would have to routinely put by the door to keep it from rotting. Alex done it the last time. But but you had to periodically do that, right? Yes. And you do that because water builds up, right? Well, because the water was splashed, they didn't seal up underneath the door jam right now. And it would just run up underneath the plate right now uh -huh. where the cement, it would run and drain off. Now, we would. can we agree that Paul was not as meticulous as you were about spraying around the kennels? Nope. We, we can or cannot agree? We can agree to that. All right. And so, and and we saw the hose out, and you don't know what time that was, but I think the record reflects it's sometime 8.44 in the evening. I mean, that's about sundown, right, in June? Oh, yeah. And so there wouldn't be a hot sun burning the water off if the hose had been used, you know, right around that period of time, would there? No. And if Paul had not been meticulous like you, it wouldn't be unusual to see water build up where you see it in the photo, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay. And uh, and sometimes the dogs would knock over the water water bowl. They would. And that would, and I think maybe we can see in the photos that would cause water to run off too, as well, right? Oh yeah, it would run off. Okay. Now, Dale, what's, what's lovey-dovey mean to you? What did it mean to me? When you use the phrase lovey-dovey about Alec and Maggie, what did that mean? It means they loved each other. What, in, in, in your presence, you just, I mean, you described that, them as being lovey-dovey, didn't you? Yes. And, and tell the jury what you meant by that. Oh, every time I always see them, they, you know, they... I've never seen that man even raise his voice at his wife or kids. Uh, um, so, um, or his wife. I've never seen him even none of them argue. Uh, but he always anything she wanted or the boys wanted, he would try to get it. And how would you? What was your observation about the relationship with Paul? They like to hunt and fish together. I mean, they always they drink beer together. Okay. Um, and, and his relationship with Buster? I didn't see Buster as much, but it was always friendly. I mean, just never sure. seen any harmful way or anything with him. You remember, um, Dale, one time one of the hunting dogs got hung up in the, one of the kennels. Yes. Choking to death. Yes. And that dog was badly injured, wasn't it? It was. It and, didn't survive. And the decision was made that mercy to put the dog down, wasn't it? Yes. And Mr. Allen couldn't shoot that dog. He asked you to do it, didn't he? Yes. And did you do that? Yes. Now, on June 7th, the night of June the 7th, um, you you got off work, I think you said 4.30? 4.30. And, and you remember what you did? Did you go home? I went straight to the house. And you stay at the house all night? I sure did. You stay inside? I did. And you live? A mile and a half. A mile and a half. I was driving a lawnmower down that road, I believe, when I was last time I saw you. I did. The... Uh, did you hear any gunshots that night while you were in your house? No, I did not. Now, 
You mentioned uh, Paul liked to hunt with a blackout, 300 blackout, I guess. He did, hog hunt. Yeah, when's up before the murders, when was the last time you saw that gun? you remember? I cannot remember Zach, but it's, it was quite a few months that, it, that he had said something about going hog hunting. He had it in his truck. Right. Uh, okay. But it's been a, it was a couple months, I know, at least... At least five, six months. All right. What? Two last points. Bubba's been getting a bad name, but Bubba's a little stubborn dog. Stubborn? No, he just rambunctious. Ramb. But if you, will you listen to you? Somewhat. You listen to Alec? He would. And um. And in that feed room, did you keep shot collars back there for for the hunting dogs and stuff? We did. What else was kept in that feed room besides feed? Uh, shock collars, feed, chicken feed, uh, the GPS tracking collars. Um, was there some medicine? There if was you need medicine. There was all kinds of stuff in there. So if you need to put something on a dog's skin for rash or something, that had that in the feed room? Had that. And now Ms. Ms. Maggie would t go down there. I mean, you, you said she'd take a Mercedes sometime, but she'd ride her bike down there too, wouldn't she? Bicycle, golf cart. And then sometimes she would walk. She'd walk. And, and she liked to get the dogs out. Um, Grady and Bubba and, and Maggie, I think, was Mr. Randolph's dog, wasn't he? Yes, sir. And, he, and she liked to run the dogs in the golf cart sometimes, let them run she behind She would. Them. Just Sometimes you just would get out there and walk. But now those were um, pet dogs, but they stayed at the kennel, right? Most of the time they did. And and they, they didn't let those dogs in the house because Buster had eczema. Were you aware of that? I didn't wear that. I knew they would take them up to the house. Now whether they went in, I didn't know. You didn't know whether they went in or out or did not? I know they stayed outside on around the house. And you know they had an electric fence? They did. And sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't? Yes. Okay. But it wasn't unusual for Bubba Grady and um, Maggie to be down at the kennels no. at night, right? They wouldn't. Okay. And they like to take, chase chickens? Bubba the one? They never would chase chickens until Alex had got a rooster that would roost right over there. After he let that rooster out, that joker got there with taunting them jokers. And they got where they would got where they would chase the chickens, cause the uh, rooster, rooster would be taunting the dogs. Yeah, they yeah, could beat the dogs to death. All right. questions I have, Dale. Thank you so much. Redirect. Curious, Dale, what happened to that rooster? Uh, I can't remember if Grady got him or Bubba got him. The, the rooster got his, apparently. Oh, one of the dolls ended up getting the rooster. All right. Uh, we heard a little bit about, um, well, first of all, did, did Alex do a lot of hunting? I don't know how much hunting he done, but he, I know he done hunting. And hunting involves uh, killing animals. It did. So as far as you knew, he was a hunter? Yes. The uh, slope of the concrete, did, I'm sorry, the, the concrete out there on the dog kennel, did it have a slope to it? Yes. And that would be for what reason? To run the water off. So the water would naturally drain out there even if it wasn't sunny? It would. And I think you mentioned and talked at length about the feed room and how there was issues there, but it w were the issues caused, the wadding road, was that caused because it was actually draining? Uh, when they'd done that room, they didn't, like I told that gentleman over there, they didn't seal that bottom plate like it should have been, and it would allow water when you sprayed the concrete off. It, 
water kept just getting slowly getting underneath the concrete until it started rotting out around the door jams and stuff. If Maggie was down there at the kennels, would she have put the dog beds down for the dogs? She would have. If the kennel lights and the hangar lights and the underneath lights are on, is it fairly, fairly well lit out there? It is. <clears throat> you mentioned uh, bed. What, what's your bedtime? You, you said you rise early. What's your bedtime? Uh, my bedtime, it, it, never, it, it all depends. Okay. What time are you in bed? That is a good question. Now, I can tell you my routine. All right, tell me your routine. Usually around four, five o'clock, I go get a shower, and I'm in my recliner to use it the rest of the day. <laughs> okay, so if you're not in bed, you're in that recliner. It, after you shower, you're in that recliner. As it. And the day is done. Done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and uh, in June 7th, that was that Monday, uh, You were you done that night at whatever time you took your shower, 4 or 5 o'clock? I was done at 4.30, 5 o'clock. I had done half my shower. I was in my recline. And uh, you were with your wife? Yes. <clears throat> Last question. When you were out there at 5 o'clock at the kennels in Mazelle, were there any firearms anywhere on that property? That night, that particular day? That particular day. I did not see none. Thank you. Anything further? No, Your Honor. Thank you, sir.